Good evening and welcome to the City of Pasco Council meeting. The Council thanks you for being part of our city government. Agenda packets are available on the City of Pasco's website at wwwpasco wagov agenda. Please note that the City Council meetings continue to be held remotely and may be viewed through our GoToWebinar. Through Proclamation Number 20-28.3, Governor Inslee extended the directive making temporary changes to, to the Open Public Meeting Act. These virtual meetings will continue until the OPMA restrictions are lifted. This meeting is being televised live on Pasco TV Channel 191, on Spectrum Cable in Pasco and Richland, and also streamed on the city's Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel. This meeting is also live via the GoToWebinar link on the agenda. And lastly, the public may submit their comments and or questions for items not on the agenda through GoToWebinar, the City of Pasco's Facebook page, or by emailing the city manager directly. And with that, I want to say uh, welcome again to our city council meeting. Um, wanted to emphasize in every meeting that we are adhering to the, uh, the social distancing practices, making sure we wear a mask. I'm only having it off so I, um, so I can speak uh, clearly and also uh, making sure that everybody is, as you can see, are way more than six feet apart. And we have sanitizer, our sanitizers and hand cleaners, making sure these things uh, are available and making doing everything we can to stay safe during uh, this time with the pandemic. So with that, I'd like to uh, go to a roll call. A roll call, please. Council Member Alvarado. Present. Council Member Maloney. Present. Council Member Milney. Present. Council Member Roach. Present. Council Member uh, Serrano. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Barajas. Present. And Mayor Martinez. Present. Seven accounted for, Mayor. Thank you. And with that, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we will move right along to the consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by roll call vote as one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If further discussion is desired by council members or the public, the item may be removed from the consent agenda to the regular agenda and considered separately. With that, uh, on the consent agenda, we got the approval of meeting minutes to approve the minutes of the Pasco City Council remote meeting held on May 18, 2020, and remote special meeting and workshop held on May 26, 2020. Uh, next item is bills and communications. To approve claims in the total amount of two million two hundred seven thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars and fifty-two cents uh, in electronic funds, um, and yes, and the next item would be a confirm of historic preservation commission reappointment. To confirm the mayor's reappointment of Devi Tate to the position number five of the historic preservation commission, with the term expiring on August first, two thousand twenty. Item D: resolution accepting local cares grant. To approve the resolution number 3962, accepting the City of Pasco's allocation from the Department of Commerce uh, Coronavirus Relief Funds for local government. So uh, with that is the uh, consent agenda. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, would you like to make a motion? Or if anybody else has, uh, if, if there is no other or further discussion or changes to the consent agenda, uh, I would like to entertain a motion. I move to approve consent agenda as read. There's been a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Is there a second? I'll second Sir that. Uh, I believe, uh, yes, I, there's a second from Council Member Roach. Um, can we have a roll call, please, for that vote? Serrano. Yes. Alvarado. Yes. Maloney. Yes. Milney. Yes. 
Roach. Yes. Barajas. Yes. And Martinez. Yes. It was unanimous, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. The vote passes unanimously. Uh, with that, we'll go to item number five, proclamations and acknowledgments, and uh, I don't see any tonight. Uh, and we'll move right along to six, where there's report from committees and or officers. Is there any council members that would like to share uh, uh, anything that they've done or any experiences that they may want to share? Uh, this is Councilwoman Roach, and I wanted to just let everybody know that last Wednesday, uh, there was the Visit Tri-Cities board meeting that took place. So just a routine meeting, um, you know, they've uh, had some decline in membership, obviously, but they also have some positive stuff going on with local businesses in Benton and uh, Franklin counties. And that is the We Are Open uh, campaign to let folks in the community know which businesses are open. Um, the other thing that I thought was of importance that you all might want to know about is that um, the Benton County commissioners, as well as the Franklin County commissioners on Tuesday, uh, both at 9 a.m. are planning on uh, having a applying for the variance to move to phase two. And so Visit Tri-Cities had requested all of our signatures um, on, on that letter uh, that's gonna accompany those county commissioners pursuing a, a variance application. So just wanted to inform you all of that. Thank you, Council Member Roach. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, uh, this is Council Member Maloney. I have a, a few things to say. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Maloney. Thank you. So I um, just want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, protests that have been ongoing um, and kind of, I guess, um, you know, I've been listening and reading and, you know, trying to, trying to understand exactly what's going on and how it's going on. Um, and I think you all know that I care deeply about how our political systems affect minor minority groups. And we know that there are some historical injustices that clearly still create some harm today. And we're seeing it play out with the most recent, with the recent homicide of George Floyd and others. Um, and I, I struggle with my role in these matters. Um, but I know that standing aside and doing nothing is wrong. And so I believe the best role for, for me is to use my voice to amplify those around me who may not be heard. So I've been in contact with a couple of local community groups and I just wanted to read some statements from them. Uh, first, um, many of you have seen an email from uh, Mr. Felix Vargas, um, but he also had a press release from Cotejo Latino that I just wanted to, to read onto the record. And I'll just quote, and I'll read it um, verbatim, so this is not me editorializing. We join millions of Americans in demanding justice for the brutal death of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis police. Justice must necessarily include criminal charges against the responsible members of the police department, trial, conviction, and sentencing. We should not accept anything less. We should also recognize that communities of color have borne a disproportionate amount of abuse and violence at the hands of police officers, whose job is to enforce laws while protecting and serving all members of a community. This situation remains a matter of local and national concern. Our own community lived through a painful chapter with the Pasco police shooting of Antonio Zambrano Montes in February of 2015. Well, the Pasco police officers were not charged due to, in large measure, um, to an archaic state criminal statute. A prolonged and peaceful protest movement yielded dialogue and cooperation with the city and its police department. In the end, our police adopted change and reform to their policies on use of lethal force, respect for human dignity, specialized training, recruitment into the force, and adopted a proactive community engagement program. The police department, the Pasco Police Department has gone on to achieve national accreditation as a professional law, organi law enforcement organization, making a model for other cities in our state and beyond. While con concerned Americans have a right to protest the death of George Floyd, we believe that they should do so peacefully and safely. The current widespread violence perpetrated in several American cities, including Seattle, is a disservice to Mr. Floyd and distracts from achieving the justice we seek. It also hurts U.S. businesses that are already reeling from the COVID-19 closures. Civil rights icon and U.S. Congressman John Lewis said it best, be constructive, not destructive. History has proven time and again that nonviolent, peaceful protest is the way to achieve just the justice that we all deserve. Consejo Latino board members, 
Felix Vargas and Leo Perales. And I'd like to read one other thing um, from um, Naima Chambers-Smith, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the Tri-Cities Diversity and Inclusivity, Inclusion Council. One second, let me find my place. The statement reads, although the killing of George Floyd floods the internet and news, he is just one example of how black people are being treated on a daily basis in our country. It should be noted that there are, have been many that were killed before him. I feel the most important thing to share is that just like the coronavirus is a pandemic, the killing of black people is a pandemic too. We need a cure for both. People of color can't create change and dismantle systemic racism alone. We need the help of those with, with privilege to use their voices to create change. That means implementing policies that legitimately create racial justice and social equity. That also means supporting black businesses, speaking up for unjust treatments of minorities, demanding that police that abuse their powers uh, are charged and held accountable for their actions, that more funding be put toward the economic development and growth of minority communities and require training of all employed at every level of the education system and government on matters such as cultural competence, trauma-informed practices, unconscious bias, DEI, inclusion hiring practices, practices and overall addressing the systemic racism that exists in our country. The Tri-Cities -Tri Diversity and Inclu Inclusion Council is dedicated to fostering a unified community, embracing cultures, and celebrating diversity through education and advocacy and the promotion of cultural competence and compassion. We would love the support of the city in helping our, our organization fulfill its mission. And she said, asked me to please share that they're looking for a supportive community. And if anyone's interested in, in contacting her, um, she can be reached at um, N-A-I-M-A -A at tri-cities-diversity-and-inclusion-council.org or at the phone number 1760-453-1983. That's the end of those statements. And I just want to say that, you know, I believe that so many things of what we're looking for to be enacted in the police department have been enacted in ours. And I'm sure there's still work to do. There's always continued work to do. But I do believe that PASCO is trying very hard to, to move forward. And as a police department, we can see by the community response that PASCO is not the place to, uh, to, to feel unheard and feel abused by the police in the same way that, some, that so many other cities are struggling. Again, we're not faultless but we've come a long way and we're continuing to make progress. And I thank the chief and the, and the police and the Pasco police officers for all their hard work and, and, and care for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maloney. And um, I take to heart and appreciate so much those statements that were made by those committees or groups, uh, such as our inclusion committee committee and, and Consejo Latino. Uh, that is exactly, uh, you know, that that's the per their purpose and they're doing exactly what uh, what they were there to do, and that's to bring peace uh, in these trying times, um, and and also being able to express, uh, you know, everybody everybody's uh, freedom of, of speech. And I I was going to bring it up during miscellaneous discussion, Mr. Maloney. Um, so maybe as a group we can discuss whether or not we can work with these groups and and staff, of course, to to perhaps. Oh, and also uh, uh, Gabriel um, had, had mentioned it with, to me. Maybe we can uh, come up with a resolution uh, that would be approved by the council to, uh, to encourage peaceful protesting and encourage people to express their freedom, their right to, to freedom of speech. And uh, it was just a thought. Maybe we can talk about it during miscellaneous discussion. But thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Maloney. And um, uh, we'll bring it up during miscellaneous discussion. Uh, the miscellaneous, miscellaneous section, but appreciate uh, you sharing with that tonight. Anybody else, uh, the council, would like to share? If there's nobody else, um, I'd, I'd like to pause to make sure we give everybody a chance. I would just like to share that um, I just got back from uh, working with the other mayors from the Tri-Cities and Prosser in working on a public safety announcement to encourage the community to um, to continue doing what we're supposed to do to try to minimize the spread of this virus. And so you will be seeing a public safety announcement coming out soon. 
on that and want to keep encouraging the community and the public um, to do so and to do that and uh, and be and be compliant with that not only just for us individually but for others the other thing that i wanted to share was i did uh, i was on a call with governor Inslee and about approximately 10 other mayors within our area region here uh, on this side of the mountains and um, it, it appears that you know this i'll just say the yakima area is of is experiencing a, a an increasing amount of numbers in their cases with the virus and they're going through uh, some measures to try to minimize that and my biggest um, what I was advocating for the most is just to to help and assist uh, for us to open up our businesses again and how vital it is and I feel like we're at a breaking point uh, and how vital it is for us to to get to a place where we can open up our businesses and one of the things that he had mentioned uh, this is the governor was well how do you you do mayors feel about uh, requiring there to be masks anytime uh, the, the public would go into a commercial retail business <clears throat> and I will tell you that I told him, I, I shared with him that I would advocate that upon council approval to, to do that to go that far so that we can open up our businesses because this is important for everybody not just the small business owners but the community as a whole uh, to open up businesses but to do it safely to do it with the restrictions put in place so that we can minimize the spread of uh, the virus and um, and it sounded like um, you know he he was working uh, towards making that better for us and then uh, it wasn't I, I believe it was just later that evening that he came out and changed the numbers and got us closer to that place where where we could uh, start applying and um, uh, applying for the phase two um, phase two on on the program so I wanted to share that I did that. Um, so next, we will um, we will go to the next on, on the agenda uh, on the agenda, and uh, which is ten. Let me get back there. Let's see here. Which is uh, item seven hearing and hearings and actions on ordinances and resolutions relating thereto. I would like to note that um, we're going to make a we're going to change the agenda item to remove item 10B uh, due to a bid protest. So item 10B will be removed from the agenda as we move forward. But for now, we'll uh, we'll start with 7A street vacation vacating portions of the street and alleys in Washington, Washington edition. And we will be continuing a public hearing uh, from the from the council. So with that, uh, is Mr. Is it Mr. Mr. Zabel? Are you going to take that? Uh, Mr. White. Mr. That. White, are you are you on? I am Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and Council. And as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, this item is continued from the March 16th um, City Council meeting in order to better coordinate this vacation request with a preliminary plat that's uh, occurring that it both involves this area and uh, the streets, uh, the right of ways that are proposed for vacation. So between now and March, that has occurred. We have a formal approval of the preliminary plat through the hearing examiner that was received today. Um, there are no issues with this street vacation. The preliminary plat that was approved, at least the schematic is uh, the last attachment in your agenda report on this item if the council is interested. But given all that's been uh, considered involved in this vacation request and the coordination that's occurred, particularly with the property owner to the east in Tierra Vida, staff would recommend Council's favorable consideration of the proposed vacation ordinance. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. White. Uh, so this is, again, we are continuing the hearing. Uh, is there anybody, uh, any of the council have any questions or comments they would like to make at this time? If not, then uh, I'm going to call, oh, and we did not get any 
uh, any information or uh, any notice from anybody who had questions or wanted to discuss on this item. So um, I will go ahead and just for the record, uh, call upon anybody else uh, that would have a, a question or would like to comment on this particular topic. Okay. So the, the final call for a public comment regarding uh, this, this uh, agenda item. Okay, so I'm gonna close the hearing. I'll close the hearing and I'll ask for a motion from council. Council member, Mayor, this is, yeah, go ahead. This is Council Us, uh, I move to adopt ordinance number 4491, vacating all roads and alley, alleys lying north of the center line of East Elena Street and east of the center line of Missoula Street within the plot of Washington edition and further authorized publication by summary only. There's been a motion uh, to adopt ordinance number 4491. Is there a second? Council Member Maloney, I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Maloney. It's been a second. So is if there's no further comments by the council, all those in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes unanimously for the record. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move right along to uh, ordinances and resolutions not relating to hearings. We have uh, a resolution to ratify emergency order related to COVID-19. Uh, we're here. Mr. Zabel, would you like to? Good evening, Chair and right? Council. Thank you. And. Uh, yeah, we actually have three resolutions for council to consider, and uh, they are essentially modified emergency orders. Uh, these are orders you've already seen once before, but for various reasons. Uh, resolution uh, 3963, for instance, was extended by the governor's order, and so we need to extend our own emergency resolution to coincide with the governor's order. Um, Motion, the uh, resolution 3964 and 3965 uh, are some temporary benefits that council had authorized uh, several weeks ago as we uh, started moving into the pandemic in our, in our response to it. And this would uh, authorize the extension of those benefits through the end of the year, which coincides with the federal, uh, federally mandated benefits as well. So uh, staff recommendation is to, uh, to uh, with three separate motions approve the three resolutions. All right, thank you, Mr. Zabel. So, if does anybody have any comments on any one of these motions? We'll start with the first one. Um, any any questions or comments from the council? I have already seen these, and uh, like like uh, Mr. Zabel had been mentioned mentioned, and uh, um, I'm I'm ready to approve these. So. If there's no further comments, uh, Councilwoman uh, Barajas, if you'd like to make a motion, please. Absolutely, thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to approve resolution number 3963, ratifying emergency order number 2020-002.1, relating to extending temporary moratorium on utility service shutoffs and late fees for, Pasco, for City of Pasco customers. Thank Mrs. you. Ruben, uh, I'll second. Okay, so there's been a motion and there's been second to move to approve resolution 3963. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, and again, uh, council, you can feel free to uh, chime in if, if you have any comments, but if not, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, if you'd like to continue with the motion. Next motion. Thank you, Mayor. Next motion, I move to approve resolution number 3964, ratifying emergency order number 2020-004.1, relating to extending temporary expansion of administrative pay leave for City of Pasco staff. Okay, there's been a motion uh, to approve resolution number 3964. Do I hear a second? This is Serrano, I'll second that. Council Member Serrano with a second, thank you very much. All those, if there's no further comment, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Next, Ms. Barajas. Uh, the next one, last one. I move to approve resolution number 3965, ratifying emergency order number 2020-005.2, relating to extending temporary change in leave policies. Thank you. There's been a, a motion to approve resolution 3965. Do I hear a second? All second. Uh, I believe that was Mr. Mr. Milney. That's Mr. Uh, Councilman Dave Milney seconded that motion. So all those in favor of uh, to approve resolution 3965 signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion passes unanimously. And thank you for that, Council. Um, I think these are very important orders and um, resolutions put in place to, to continue uh, doing business for the City of Pasco. So next, uh, unfinished business, uh, number nine, there's none. Uh, new business, we go to confirmation of Civil Services Commission Personnel Board appointments. Mr. Uh, Thabel? Thank you, Mayor, and uh, again, Council. So t this evening, uh, Council's being asked to consider uh, two appointments, uh, reappointment and appointment to the city's Civil Service Commission, which has authority on certain labor and employment rules uh, relating to our public safety employees and police and fire. Uh, those would also include civilian employees within those departments as well as uh, the commissioned uh, employees and so we uh, have a reappointment of Janice Hastings and some of you may be familiar with uh, Miss Hastings but she's been on our commission for several years now and is I think really done a great job sets the bar for for the commission and uh, I'm excited to be able to present to her for you as a, as a reappointment and then uh, a new a person fairly new to Pasco and would be new to the commission uh, Miss Saldua uh, has a has a degree in the public safety field. Uh, she also has worked in and around uh, civil service as a civil service, uh, not in not in Pasco, but as a civil service covered employee. Uh, she currently is not, however, but uh, has a lot of experience with public safety employees uh, in her professional employment, and I think she'd be an excellent uh, addition to the civil service commission. So. Uh, that would be uh, an appointment uh, to fill out a, a term, and my recommendation would be for the for the two appointments. Thank you, Mr. Zabel. A any comment from the council? If there's none, uh, Council a Woman uh, Braz, would you like to make a motion? Absolutely, Mayor. Um, I move to confirm the city manager's reappointment of Janice Hastings. To position number one, term to expire 217 2026, and appoint Je Josie Saldua to position number two, term to expire 217 2022, to the Civil Service Commission Personnel Board. Okay, there's been a motion to reappoint uh, Janice Hastings to position one and Josie Saldua to position two. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. A second by Councilwoman uh, Roach. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, motion, aye. motion passes unanimously. Thank you, and the next item has been removed from the agenda. So next we'll go to miscellaneous discussion. Um, would anybody, anybody have anything uh, they would like to share uh, before Mr. Zabel shares what he's got? Yes, Mayor, this is uh, Councilwoman uh, Barajas, and I do actually have a statement I'd like to read. Okay. And this statement is regarding the protests, if I may. Okay. Um, so Mr. Maloney mentioned earlier um, uh, of the unique position we're in to speak up and speak out on behalf of um, the underserved. And the situation that we're in currently um, I understand the frustration over the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, and many, many more unjustified, unnecessary deaths by a certain small group of individuals that are supposed to protect our community. However, I do want to point out that they do not represent all of the police officers. 
Um, it's shameful, painful, and understandable. The frustration of systemic racism leading to peaceful protest is a result. I urge protesters to remain nonviolent. Um, we have the fortune in Pasco to have an excellent police department um, with extensive training. And as Mr. Maloney mentioned earlier, nationally accredited force. Um, yes, enough is enough. And like Martin Luther King said, protests are the language of the unheard. Um, let's not lose the track of the track of the message by allowing civil unrest to take over. Um, I just want to say thank you to Pasco police, the first responders, and especially our residents for keeping the peace while also peacefully seeking reform and justice. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Barajas. That was, um, that was, that was heartfelt. Anybody, um, anybody else for miscellaneous discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Alvarado. Mr. Alvarado, go ahead. I think uh, very much related to that, I, I mean, uh, obviously it's a very difficult time in our country and we're seeing um, heartbreaking scenes of people who are frustrated and who are um, heartbroken. Uh, we're also seeing some folks who are agitating um, the worst in us. And um, so I, I, g having said that, I do not want to go into a, a speech about this, uh, but I certainly want to uh, um, perhaps uh, open up our discussion, um, if, if that's okay, Mr. Mayor, uh, about what, what it is that our, our role as council members and as, as city officials uh, is in being able to declare what it is that we, who it is that we choose to be. Um, and so, um, I think for, for, from my limited knowledge and experience, I, I, I certainly know that we've come a long way in our community policing. And I certainly, um, uh, I'm very thankful to have, um, to be on the other end of a uh, dark um, recent history, um, but certainly one that uh, as a council, as a body that we continue to state that that is a priority for us uh, the the uh, community policing that uh, builds relationships rather than um, uh, uh, aims to um, essentially promote law and order by any means. Um, and so I uh, I certainly think that a I don't know if a statement is in order or the best approach, but it certainly has to do with uh, for me community policing, but also pr not only promoting but also encouraging people to use their voices. Um, and to be able to uh, peacefully protest. Um, and I think uh, lastly, to be able to uh, have a way to open, have open, not uh, discourse only, but also dialogue within our community. And I think part of that uh, it was our, is our inclusivity commission. And so my, pro my proposal, I guess, for us is to expediently set up, set up a, um, a gathering of uh, the inclusivity commission to really work through this. Uh, with a small cohort of council members to really um, put out a, a statement or put out a um, s something that really states our intention and who we choose to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alvarado. And yes, in 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 light of that or in in line with what you're saying, um, I would ask Dave to um, somehow maybe work, have staff work on with these groups that you're talking about, Mr. Alvarado, so that we can. Uh, come up with a, a and I'm not sure if it's a resolution or a proclamation or both, but uh, to to kind of help us uh, share with the community and where we stand with those kind of things. I also wanted to uh, share, Mr. Alvarado, that you know I was thinking during the week we we missed out on our um, <laughs> uh, for 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 the purposes of the council we missed out on our retreat. Uh, in which if one day we uh, soon we get together and uh, and get to have our retreat to, to, to set our goals for the next two years and and to uh, come closer as a council to work together, uh, that is definitely something that needs to be on the agenda item is as council members, where where do we stand and uh, and what what should we be doing during these trying times? And definitely something we can talk about. But in the meantime, uh, Mr. Zabel, any suggestions on uh, on uh, 
setting a, a stage or, or getting the committees together to come up with a, a resolution? Yeah, uh, our inclusive, Inclusivity, Diversity, and Equity Committee has been appointed by council. They've not met because of the COVID interruption. And uh, but we do have a facilitator lined up and, you know, perhaps they could meet like council's meeting right now and kind of work through and give you some ideas for uh, a resolution. I, I think uh, uh, council member Alvarado had asked about um, council representation on that. So if council would want to discuss that for a minute or two, we can figure out who that might be and we can we can pull a group together and, and get them to work on that. And so we could only have the maximum of three? You could have a maximum of three. Maximum of three. Mm -hmm. Well, council, this is a good opportunity for us to, to discuss that. It, uh, would there be three volunteers that are passionate and would like to be a part of this? Um, I, I, I would guess <laughs> Mr. Maloney had brought it up, but uh, uh, go ahead and share, share your thoughts and if somebody would like to, uh, to volunteer to, to be a representative of the council on this. This is Council Member Alvarado. I would love to volunteer. Okay. This is Mayor Pro Tem uh, If I allowed, I'd like to volunteer as well. Okay. One more. Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to serve if that's um, appropriate, but um, if, if someone else would like to serve instead, I would uh, happily defer that as well. Okay. Well, we. This is Serrano. Same boat as Councilman Malone. I, I'm happy to serve, but I'm also happy to allow anyone else that, that uh, feels more qualified, I guess, to do so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Serrano. So for now, why don't we have uh, Council Member Alvarado? Uh, Council Member Blanche Barajas and Mr. Maloney uh, as representatives. Okay. And we can move forward and hopefully we can come up with something and uh, just have the community understand that we are with them, we are here for them, and we'll do whatever we can to, uh, to continue this. And with that, I just want to say that I am... Uh, <clears throat> as I was... As I was uh, getting ready for the weekend and, and realizing that the rumors were going around and Richmond was getting ready to protest, uh, you know, to, to get a group together, you know, I, I was just contemplating on, on many, many things like I know you guys uh, and, and women, uh, the other council have been. Um, but I was just, you know, reading some of the things on social media and I just want to say that... Um, Despite so many things that have happened already this year, uh, I just am so happy that I'm not uh, one of those mayors that had to uh, provide a speech of um, disappointment, like I've heard so many times around the country. Um, one of the things that I heard 99% of the time was, this is to be peaceful, we're going to do this right, we're going to be example for our nation. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a proud mayor today uh, and relieved uh, that we have such quality people that want to do the right thing uh, and, not, uh, and not cause more, more hate and discontent. Um, I don't think there's anybody more than us that want our freedoms to be expressed, and, but to do it in the way, in a respectable way that it was done. Um, and I know that there was one instance where, you know, the, the crowd may have wanted to get a little, get more energy out than they needed to, but, uh, but there was people there to say, this is, this is not how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the right way, and, and it was expressed. And I couldn't be more proud. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just so proud of our community and, and showing their true colors and, uh, and how well they responded to this and, you know, and, and had their voice heard as best they could. So, I just want to say thank you to all the community members for for being responsible and for uh, and for being a great American uh, and being a great citizen and improving the quality of life here in Pasco. I know that this situation sparked up uh, a lot of feelings from what's happened here in the past, but we learned from what happened here in the past and uh, accredited police department and all the training that was done. All that stuff has paid off. 
and the, the relationship we have with with our uh, uh, committees and community and our police department and our staff uh, is something to be proud of. And uh, one of the things ever since I moved here to this to this city, I just wanted to be a city that modeled uh, for the nation, not just for our state. And I think we've done that. I think we're we're moving towards that, and we're working that uh, on that better every day. So with that, I just want to say thank you once again. Um, it, it brought peace and hope uh, to my life, and uh, I know it did for a lot of people. And, and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not demeaning this in any way. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. But we're moving, and, and we're going we're gonna to get there. Uh, we just have to take one step at a time. And this weekend, Pasco showed that that step was going forward. So thank you very much for that. Um, hey, anybody else? If not, Mr. Zabel, you have some miscellaneous discussion? Yes, I had, I had a couple of things, Mayor, and I, I did want to, before I get into the main topic, I want to discuss a uh, note that, uh, you know, I was able to spend part of Sunday with uh, with uh, Chief Gear and Chief Roski and wanted to just point out that, uh, you know, certainly the, a lot of credit for the success of Sunday and the peaceful protests we had in our town and the condition our town was in in when it was done uh, is a credit to the people that were doing the protesting, but also to uh, the two chiefs, uh, the advanced planning that they put into place to be ready for it and the appropriate presence. You know, there, there was a lot of there was a lot of police in town, but not a lot of police around the protesters, but enough to help keep them safe. And that was our primary goal uh, on Saturday. Uh, 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 the department did a great job of reaching out uh, to the organizers and maintained uh, good contact throughout the event. And uh, I wanted to share, uh, well, we did a wrap up Sunday evening. Uh, Chief Roski was talking to, to his staff, uh, probably about 20 or so in the room had come in, maybe 25 that were out on uh, participating in this event and, and trying to keep our city and the, and the protesters safe. And uh, you know, I, I can't remember his exact words, but really the sentiment, I should have wrote it down like uh, Councilmember Maloney did, and, and then I could have read it. But, uh, but the sentiment was along the lines of, that was part of the reason why the Pasco Police Department's here, is so people can have a voice and they can express it safely. And uh, he congratulated them all on a great job that day in keeping the community safe. So I thought those were really good words and, and encouraging for, for our officers and wanted to share that with Council. So secondly, uh, getting on to another item, earlier in the agenda you uh, approved uh, the CARES Act funds, which was about two and a quarter million dollars. And uh, you know, there's a lot that goes in, you know, this is federal dollars that are coming to the, to the city. You, you allocated some earlier that were associated with a community development block grant. And so those have a specific infrastructure and it, and it has very well-known rules associated with it and a process and uh, reporting mechanisms and things like that. And the second uh, batch of money, which is actually considerably more than the block grant money uh, council had, or the city had received is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, was put together very quickly at the federal level. And there's a lot of people scrambling at the federal, state and local levels uh, to try to figure out I, I think we have a pretty good sense of uses, but now we're getting into questions about eligibility and reporting and uh, those type of things. And then there's probably some local things we need to talk about uh, associated with it, uh, whether it's a competitive grant or it would be a first come first serve basis or whether it was a, be a limit uh, on a grant or a flat amount based on a percentage of gross income, for instance, with, uh, with a cap, or what the selection process is going to be, what the reporting process is going to be, and, and how do we, at the end of the day, after we spend two and a quarter million dollars, how do we report to the public the impact of those dollars uh, so the public that, that's interested can look and, and learn what did we do and what difference did it make? And I, I've asked, uh, you know, we've been working with state agencies, uh, particularly Department of Commerce, on this, and I've asked uh, our finance director, Rachel Sigdell, to talk a little bit about uh, the eligibility part. Uh, 
and then uh, uh, Rick White, our CD director, is going to cover the process of distribution and accounting and performance reporting. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Richa. Okay, Richa. Mm -hmm. Yes, evening council, uh, and thank you, Dave. Um, you covered it really well. Uh, there's a lot of, um, or has been a lot of unknowns on uh, CARES um, Act for local government, which I would just call local CARES. And um, part of um, the confusion or uh, lack of uh, information has just been the fact that uh, it was an act that rightfully was passed very quickly uh, and local governments were kind of at the end of, um, of that cycle of how it impacts us and what are the expectations of this fund. And we had a really good um, webinar that MRSC had organized with uh, Department of Commerce and um, I'm sure they regret it right now, but they did share their, uh, their contact information and we've been trying to work with Department of Commerce to get uh, more of our uh, questions answered. And interestingly in that webinar, a lot of the questions, especially regarding business assistance, uh, was uh, very similar. And that one important uh, answer that most local governments wanted was what are the expectations of the end recipient, which is essentially the small businesses. And if the expectation is that um, the small businesses keep the same uh, type of accounting that is expected of the city of Pasco, uh, if the city of Pasco is expected to um, make sure that the funds are being spent um, as per the federal, federal and state guidelines. Uh, what is the cost of managing uh, that kind of program for this short period of time? Uh, but also, will our business owners be able to meet those guidelines as well? And um, I, I think I can speak for all. Many of us were hoping for an answer that essentially said um, that we can give out these funds as non-reimbursement grants. So essentially, you would make a, a program guideline and you would find eligible businesses um, and you would give them a, a chunk of funds and there really would be no um, need for reimbursement review. Um, and that would definitely cut on the overhead. Um, the impression that um, me and a lot of my peers got from that webinar was that commerce had not really thought about this as, uh, though it is allowed, uh, had not really given it a lot of thought in terms of what are the requirements for the sub recipients uh, if they're small businesses. So um, they're going back and um, going to um, come back to us with an answer. Um, and um, our hope is that at this point, we will be allowed to give non-reimbursable grants uh, from local cares to our local businesses and help them through this difficult time. Uh, we have not heard back from them, um, though I can assure you that I have been um, contacting them and MRSC almost every other day. And my hope is that the answer is forthcoming anytime soon. The, some of the other eligibility for uh, the city's cost um, are anything related to COVID, anything that is essential, um, and um, it cannot um, cover any revenue shortfall. So for example, if we're expecting $2 million less in sales tax because of COVID, uh, you cannot use the CARES Act as a way of making up for that sales tax. Uh, and also anything that was not budgeted as of end of March, um, which is essentially anything related to COVID, we were not anticipating this. We did get the award letter uh, with a little bit more documentation on um, May 22nd, and um, that is in your package. Um, and overall, that is unfortunately um, the most information that I have about CARES. We are uh, waiting on that additional piece of business assistance. Uh, and I believe after that, uh, we will have almost everything that we uh, need in terms of how we can fully utilize this grant. And if you have any questions, I will do my best. 
Thank you, Richa. Thank so you for that report. And perhaps, Rick, if you could maybe jump in and talk a little bit about just just trying to your thoughts on distribution and and uh, accounting and the kind of things we're going to have to do to. I, I, and most of this is just to make council aware of. We, we need a bit of an infrastructure we don't have right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Dave. And that's exactly right. Um, this is very similar to the uh, stimulus money that the city received through Commerce back in 2008. It was uh, not as hastily put together as this, though, but there still were a lot of unknowns with that money and how it needed to be spent. And we're still finding out what many of those expectations are right now. We're currently developing guidelines for the uh, block grant money that Dave mentioned earlier. Um, but the CARES money that Richa just discussed uh, should follow very similar guidelines as the CDBG, uh, the, the roughly $430,000 that we received or that council considered a few weeks ago. Um, the guidelines uh, have been borrowed from a commerce template, Washington State Department of Commerce template. Um, we are uh, looking for the proper amount of paperwork documentation that we can use as safeguards for fraud and uh, underwriting guidelines for the grants. And we're um, purchasing a software program that is designed specifically for this purpose. For the applicant intake and then determining eligibility. There are uh, a few uh, things that council will need to weigh in on. Again, uh, as, as uh, Mr. Zabel mentioned, the uh, maximum amount of loans, or excuse me, of grants, um, how that's distributed, what we expect. But basically, we have a place, and it is an eligible activity for business relief in both the CDBG CARES package and the uh, larger CFR CARES package. Um, we're searching diligently for a, a nonprofit group to act as the subrecipient for the processing of these loans. Um, we have a number of options. None of them have panned out yet. Uh, we were originally hoping to use CAC because they had a bit of uh, infrastructure in place, but um, some grant funding that they were expecting did not come through, so they won't be able to provide the uh, subrecipient uh, duties for the business relief. We think they can do it though for the rental relief with the use of home consortium funds. So at the risk of uh, being um, a, a little bit vague, uh, we are still working with Commerce and HUD. There are some guidelines that we need fine tuning from them on. And uh, we hope to have this in place with the choice of a subrecipient for the processing of the business loans uh, to coincide with the preparation of the um, of the guideline uh, finalization from HUD and Commerce. So, so with that, if I could if I could jump in and, and thank you, Rick. Um, June eighth, we were going to come back to council and provide you a bit of a, a more detailed quarterly report, uh, maybe focused. Uh, a little bit on the COVID impact as well as the COVID spending piece for the city. And from that, you're going to have that piece of information of what has the city spent so far uh, in responding to the crisis, because those are eligible costs for this. And council will be able to, to, to make some determinations as to um, how much they want to try to dis distribute, either all two and a quarter million, or they, do they want to use some of that to, to um, reimburse uh, taxpayer costs uh, associated with city expenditures and then um, you'll have you'll also have I, I think another week of effort on our part in kind of nailing down some of this information we're looking for you trying to trying to determine for you in terms of uh, some of the questions that, uh, that Rick and Richa had discussed and what I was hopeful of tonight is uh, and I, I hate to impose on on council because we're at the end of the meeting but uh, these unusual times require sometimes unusual met methods. So hopeful of some council discussion this evening, on at least on your collective thoughts. I know you don't really have enough information to make definitive decisions about this stuff, but some of your collective thoughts on what you're thinking about, where you'd like to see the money going, your, your kind of your target area. Uh, one thing I would ask to keep in mind is 
the more recipients we, the, the, a recipient, whether you get $5,000 or whether you get $50,000, pretty much takes the same amount of staff time. It's just an extra zero. Uh, so the more recipients we have, the more administrative costs are going to be associated with the, with the, uh, with the dollars available. So something to, something to chew on while you're, while you're kind of contemplating the question. And uh, I think any information you could provide staff tonight would be helpful. It'll help us fine tune some of our questions with uh, with commerce and others as well. So, hmm. thank you, Mr. Zabel. Hopefully, uh, everybody was able to to hear all of that. There was a, a little bit of uh, sound technical problems with Mr. White, but uh, any any comments uh, would like to share with the staff uh, from council. This is Serrano, I'll take a crack at it. <clears throat> so if I understand correctly, we can either essentially defer pots of money to the city or to private businesses, that's correct. Or am I correct in that understanding? You, it's, well, the city, you could, you could only uh, use, you could only reimburse the city out of those monies to the extent uh, the city would actually have a COVID-related expenditure. So we're, we're, we'll be able to have, we'll have a, a total for you next week. I, I can tell you roughly right now we're anticipating spending, uh, you know, on the order of uh, probably a million and a quarter to a million and a half dollars before the end of the year. And that that's not to okay. say that that well, it's just a simple matter of subtracting uh, two and a quarter from from one million, and that's how much you can give away. It's, it's, I, I don't mean to to present it that way because. Uh, you know, council's got a reserve in the general fund and other funds, and you know they they may want to to utilize more of that CARES money uh, out into the public than just a 100% reimbursement of the city. Maybe they they look at reimbursing 75% of the anticipated city costs and uh, and uh, using the remainder uh, uh, out in the community. Okay, I, I appreciate that, City Manager D uh, Zabel. Um, I ask that just to make sure I'm clear and, and as I talk through this, like you said, we're kind of moving on the fly here. So um, absolutely money needs to get out into the city. We have people who aren't going to make rent, mortgage, be able to pay for their cars. Um, these are business owners who have worked a long, long time. My thought as far as reimbursing the city is if we know that our budget is going to be truncated in a way that we are going to lose employees uh, similar to these people are losing their businesses. We need to determine what portion of the city, the budget the city would need to ensure that doesn't occur. Um, if that number is zero and we have to pull from reserves, then we have to ultimately ask our questions. How are we going to make that money up? Um, what fees are we going to potentially raise? Uh, what other considerations we're going to have? Um, so again, my preference, strong preference to get as much of the money out into um, business hands as possible. Um, I apologize that that doesn't give you a percentage, a dollar value, um, but we also do need to recognize that essentially we are board members of a business and that business is a municipal corporation of the city of Pasco. We have a fiduciary responsibility to the residents of Pasco to make sure that the business doesn't bleed itself too. So I guess to the extent that next week you come back with information on, again, if we're going to lose positions, um, we need to make sure that the city stays viable in that way. Otherwise, let's flood as much money as we can out into the city. Thank you. This is uh, Council Member Alvarado. I am very much in uh, step uh, in view with uh, Mr. Uh, Serrano. Uh, so I will echo the exact same statement. This is Council, this is Council Member Maloney. Oh, uh, please. Sorry about that, Council Member Maloney. Just wanted to say that I appreciate Council Member Serrano's discernment in this um, and his level of questioning. Uh, mine would also be in support of small business uh, first, and uh, and then after that, you know, our most vulnerable populations: uh, elderly, nursing home uh farm workers um and then supporting uh any needs for ppe uh so that's my those are my 
inputs for now. Thank you, Council, Council Member Maloney. Um, I very much echo a lot of what Mr. Serrano said um, and, and with an emphasis on quickly. Um, we already have businesses that are long-standing businesses in our community in our downtown that are that are already closing up shop and, and we need to move as quickly as possible. I understand how slow it is when we're slowing down from federal to state to local, um, but anything we can do to move things quicker, um, including if it makes some sense for us to, if there's some sort of creative way we can make sure to either lend money directly from the city under this emergency um, orders where I believe we have some more flexibility than we typically would, um, if there's something we can do um, and try to be creative towards the end, we might want to consider that. Um, the other thing I'd like to add in addition to the small businesses, um, to get our small businesses up on their feet, we need to not just give them money, but ensure we get through the phases quickly so we can fully reopen. And that means making sure that, any, that, that we look at investing into how can, we be, how can we make sure that we're meeting those phase requirements so we can as quickly as possible get to that fully reopened state. So um, I would like that to be a consideration as well. I think that will be the, in the long run the most effective thing we can do to reopen businesses and keep people safe. So we need to, in the, in the interim, make sure that these businesses survive until, until we can reopen, and then also make sure that we can, we can reopen as quickly as possible. Um, you know, we've been very prudent and cautious in the past as to how we manage our budget, and we have a rainy day fund that is, um, that is healthy, and we've seen that in our bond rates. Um, I certainly don't want to make imprudent decisions now that will hurt us in the future, but I am, I am in favor of dipping in to some extent into a rainy day fund. It would be hard to imagine many scenarios that are more rainy than today is. So um, I'm in favor of, of, if we need to, going a little bit above and beyond um, the money that we've been given to make sure that we have, that our residents, our taxpayers, our businesses are taken care of, because that's ultimately the money we are managing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maloney, Mr. Toronto, and everybody who's commented. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Zabel, are you, did you get some ideas? That's, that's great. I appreciate the input, and uh, I, I know it was a little bit messy. Uh, the hope tonight was, uh, the reason it was messy is because we didn't have all the information and, and wanted to try to save a little time and have this discussion tonight rather than dump it on you and have this discussion next week. Now you've got a week to think about it. Uh, hopefully we'll have some additional information next week we can all chew on, and uh, Council can make some more specific, uh, give us some more specific direction next week. Perfect. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Council. Um, anybody else have any last parting comments before I uh, get ready to close uh, or go to the next item and close the meeting? Yeah. Just a quick question for Mr. Sable. Yeah. I'm sorry, was this Mr. Alvarado? Yes, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Milne was also ch uh, chiming in, but. Yeah. Was, yeah, thank you, uh, Councilman Al Alvarado. I was trying to chime in, but obviously something's wrong with my iPad. But uh, I was wanting to say that I do agree with uh, Councilman uh, Maloney as far as small business and Roach when she's talking about small businesses. Uh, I just would hate to see the downtown dry up. Um, I know a lot of those businesses are closed and I just worry about them greatly. So whatever we could do to, to get the, the downtown back in order, obviously in a safe manner um, is also of my utmost concern. So I just wanted to say that I was in agreement with Serrano, Maloney and Zara Roach as far as uh, the different ideas. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Milley, um, for those comments. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Council Member Alvarado. Um, just a, a, a clarity question uh, for, um, would we have to have a kind of vote for a specific direction or just maybe more discussion? I know next uh, week is uh, not a voting uh, meeting. Yeah, I, I so just think about that. Yeah, I, I don't know that we'll have, I, I, I'm hoping next week we can kind of nail down some of the questions we have an answer tonight. And we can get some specific direction from council and that we get some additional information from commerce, for instance. And uh, we can have a really good sense going into it, where we're going next, we would bring to the next meeting, uh, whatever resolution we needed to adopt the program. And, uh, and then we can get this thing moved forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Barajas. Okay. I was trying to get, I was thinking my comments, but it kept getting cut off. Um, 
just really wanted to point out that it sounds like we are all in agreement of supporting our downtown businesses and businesses in general to get right back up where where we um, you know benefit families that are struggling and business owners that are struggling. Um, so just an agreement of of all our council. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mayor, this is Councilwoman Roach. May I say something? Yes. There, this is in the same vein as the conversation we're having right now. It's not necessarily about how do we spend the money uh, that we just discussed, but uh, you know, I had an email exchange a few weeks ago with uh, Mr. Zabel about what some other downtowns and cities are doing uh, in the means, in the ways of helping their small business and helping their downtowns, their main streets. Uh, the, the example that I found was in Cincinnati and what they have done is they have closed down some of the streets to the downtown for uh, uh, cars, but they've opened up as far as allowing those downtown business owners to basically spill out onto sidewalks and maybe par parking areas so that they can do seating, um, they can do the distancing that they need because as a lot of downtowns across uh, the United States, they're old buildings, they don't have the same kind of space and the square footage that maybe newer buildings have. And so even in this, you know, in the earlier discussion about our, our uh, bi-county commissioners applying for variances for, for phase two, Maybe that can also come up in our discussion as to if we get those variances, how can we allow for those business owners to maybe increase the capacity of their uh, their patrons? Um, how can we take advantage of the fact that we are in our summer, one of our uh, easiest seasons for us to be outdoors and to still shop at boutiques or uh, peruse the furniture is down, uh, downtown or maybe go to a bakery or a, a restaurant. So just some food for thought for other council members of, of um, conversations we can have around um, how we reopen and how we help our small business owners. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Zabel, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I, I did want to share with the, with the council that uh, we do have an interdisciplinary team working on that very issue. We're looking at, uh, you know, under the concept that, for instance, uh, phase two, I think, is 50% capacity uh, for a restaurant. Uh, so 50% capacity of a restaurant, yeah, you probably don't need 100% of your required parking. And maybe on a private lot that maybe doesn't have street frontage, uh, we could use some of the parking, or the business could use some of the parking spaces to be able to increase the head count at their restaurant, because it's Difficult to run a restaurant at 50% capacity. And that gives you, uh, as Council Member Roach mentioned, that gives you an opportunity to get more heads out there. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown, we, you know, we're uh, working with uh, uh, our, our teams, working with uh, Colin Hastings of Chamber of Commerce. He's been one of our contacts that they've used. Uh, and Colin happened to, has, happened to have been in the restaurant business, which makes it even helpful, not only as the Chamber uh, Executive Director, but also has a pretty extensive experience in the business. So uh, downtown, we're looking at sidewalk seating. Uh, and then potentially there might be some opportunity for uh, seating in parking spaces, although our parking spaces downtown, once that opens up, it's gonna be a bit of a premium. So, but uh, trying, trying to look at a, a number of different alternatives and, and we should be able to bring something to council before too long. It's, we were contemplating that probably be in the, in the um, uh, shape of an emergency order similar to to what uh, uh, what council has seen for the sign code ver the temporary sign code uh, relaxation on takeout signs so something that and, and the other thing I you know we chatted about a little bit uh, it's going to give us a chance to experiment around a little bit and as we refine some of this stuff for more permanent uh, we'll have some experience with it and maybe a better handle on what works and what doesn't work. So, Thank you for that, Mr. Zabel. A great ideas and uh, looking forward to, to doing, uh, you know, with, with need comes um, innovation. And uh, it's, it's great to hear this. 
and we'll do whatever it takes to to get things going again. Thank you very much. And so with that, Mr. Mayor, like, I got. Oh, go ahead, Mr. I, I do. Maloney. Maloney. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, I just wanted to I want to address something that that came up a little bit last week, um, um, and certainly has come up a couple times during my my term in office here. Um, and people often ask me, why did I choose to vote the way I did? Um, and I, I really have to say, I, I'm going to go back to my oath of office and I'm going to read it out loud because I think people have forgotten exactly what we signed up for and what we swore when we, when we entered office. So I, Craig Maloney, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution and laws of the state of Washington and all local ordinances and that I will faithfully and impartially perform and discharge the duties of office of council member for the city of Pasco according to the law to the best of my ability. And so what I want to emphasize there is you will not catch me voting against the law. I won't do it. I believe that violates my oath of office and there's nothing more important to me as a council member than following my oath of office. And so again, as people question, why did I choose to vote in certain ways? Question first, did it, break or violate a state or other law. And if it did, I almost assuredly voted against it. I will not knowingly broke my oath. And I, I believe that's the standard we should hold all of our elected officials to at every level. First, follow the law. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Maloney. Anybody else? Then I would like to uh, just, uh, um, before we go to the next item, um, just remind everybody uh, that with the storms that we have been having lately, uh, the come fires and um, uh, due to the lightning storms that we've had, I want to thank all the firefighters, all the emergency responders, and, and also want to encourage everybody to, to do the same, to thank the firefighters. Um, you know, with this weekend as busy as it was, and then with these storms and these sagebrush fires that we had between the Hanford site and all the way up towards Yakima, um, kept them very busy and um, and they were out uh, fighting these fires for for our community so want to say thank you to all the firefighters out there and uh, and again I want to encourage the public to to thank them when they see them a lot of times they do such a great job that we don't even realize it and we take it for granted but uh, we'd like to say thank you with that and then one last uh, motivation and encouragement is please community um, Let's do what we can to get our businesses to, to safely open up. And I, I have to say that, you know, one of the things that, that the governor, whether we agree with what he says and what he does or not, uh, as Mr. Maloney says, we, we need to follow the law. And um, as I went out to Walmart today, uh, and not just Walmart, it was, it was just as I was driving through town, um, they're estimating that only 30% of the community is, is actually protecting others by wearing masks. And I'm afraid, uh, as much as I don't like to wear the mask, uh, I'm willing to make that sacrifice because it, the benefits outweigh so much more if we can just do what, our part in, in not spreading the virus so that we can maintain uh, safety and, and then, and then uh, hopefully uh, working on those numbers to lower the spread of the virus so that our business can continue to stay open. The last thing we need is to open up businesses and then all of a sudden we have a, a, uh, an outbreak or, or some type of a, an increase in the numbers. But if we just all do our part to just use these whenever you're with uh, anybody in the public, uh, I want to encourage that. And I, and I want to tell you that I don't take that lightly because these things bother me. They really do personally but the benefits outweigh. Now, we're not asking people who would have a health issue by wearing these to, to do that. Uh, we, we don't want to bring harm to anybody, but I think that the majority of the citizens uh, are going to ask you to please do your part in helping the community as a whole by wearing your mask as much as possible. So I just wanted to end with that. I appreciate your, uh, your confidence and, and your uh, willingness to, to help out, and that's what we're here to do. So... With that, I'm going to go to the next uh, next item on the agenda, and that's uh, there's no executive session, obviously, uh, Mr. Manager. So this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, and have a good night.